You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, and thank you for joining me for a very special edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. Tonight it's going to be one guy and two gals from California who happen to be my aunts in town for my parents' 50th and a wedding anniversary that's coming up on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So let me introduce uh, Linda Kirsten. Hello, I'm Linda from Corona, California. Happy to be here. Thank you very much. And then I have my other aunt, Sandra Grant. From San Diego, California. Who are not only wine lovers, but also watch the show out there in California. Love it. Yes, give great feedback uh, when they can. Show. I appreciate that. And what's exciting about tonight's show is we're going to be doing three, possibly four wines. And uh, what I did is I start, I'm going to start off with a uh, Spanish Cava, which is the uh, Casa del Mar Blanc de Blanc. And a Cava is technically a champagne, but because it's not made in France in the Champagne region, it's called a Cava. But it's made exactly the same way and you get the exact same flavor profile generally as you would in a good champagne, if it's a good cava. And uh, I'm, I haven't tried this one yet. It was recommended to me by a friend, and I figured now is a good time to do it. And this was actually used in a blind tasting test with champagne, 50 to $60 bottles of champagne, and this actually beat them out. Nice. So we're going to start off with the Casa del Mar Spanish Cava, which you probably notice has very fine bubbles right off the bat, which I see in Sandy's glass. Yes. And like most champagnes that are actual real champagnes, there was a lot of Cheers. effervescence early on in the Cheers. Port. And I apologize for not having champagne stems, but I just forgot them in my haste to get to the studio. Very nice. Oh, that's, that's really no, nice tasting. No, I know. Traveling all over Europe, the European liquors, wines, I mean the wines mostly, they don't use as many chemicals because we have so much restrictions here. Generally, there are sulfites in most right. American wines. Mm -hmm. uh, that's highly debatable whether or not the actual sulfites change the characteristics of the wine. Uh, most people would say no, but that's still open for debate. I. I've had organic wines on this show, mm -hmm. one or two, that didn't have sulfites, but not enough to make an actual comparison. Maybe that's a future show. See, Sandy just came up with an idea for a future show. Organic <laughs> wines with no sulfites. No, I was just see? curious. I mean, I love my wines, but I've always been told that, and I don't see the big difference. And I was just wondering, see if you, your knowledge, that's all. You know, I've, I've heard, and uh, once again, that all the magazines, most of the reputable ones say that there's really nothing that it does to the characteristics or the flavor of the wine. Oh, okay. um, but once again, you know, that's one of those things that we might have one varietal that is organic mm -hmm. with no chemicals and one wine that has the sulfides in it and uh, see if there's a noticeable difference in uh, flavor. That would be an interesting show to have. And uh, once again, I, for this one in particular though, uh, the Ca Casa del Mar is a small artisanary winery that makes their champagne in the, or cava in the traditional champagne method. And once again, this is a 12 to $14 bottle of bubbles and that you can you can put this against a lot of champagnes. And where, where is this winery, Bobby? This one's uh, well. This wine's in Spain. It's, so the, it's from Spain. It, this one's Spain. It's important. Okay. Yeah, but you can find this locally. Uh, just do some searching online for Castle Mar. I'll put this up on the web page. Okay. Um, this once again is from the wise old dog here in West Hartford, who always has phenomenal stuff. And uh, he told me he just got this in a few days ago. And uh, this is my first sip, and I love it's it. I think it's really good. Very mild. I love it. mm -hmm. The bubbles are very smooth. Very nice. I like that. It's not a strong carbonation taste. There's and what we're going to do in our second round is we're going to pair these whites with different food groups that I brought in, which are really going to emphasize or de-emphasize the flavor. I have wasabi almonds, which are one of my favorite, a really pungent cheese, really pungent cheese, which I think is going to go good with some of these wines, and then just some crackers to maybe just clean the palate. Mm. So when Jim and I usually drink our first, we do our first tasting, we either do a thumbs up, thumbs sideways, or thumbs down. I'm going to go thumbs up on this one. 
I'll give it a thumbs up as well. Definitely. I like it. So Love thumbs, it. thumbs up nice. for the first one, but it might change when we go back to the food groups. Okay. Now, obviously, you guys from California, Napa Valley, you both, I think, are wine aficionados. You both have wine cellars. You both will have wine. Yes. Yes. Linda, what are you? Uh... I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much strictly a cab girl, uh, simply because white wines, I don't know the reason why, but they tend to give me a headache. That's not the first time I've heard um, that. That's after true. After yeah. one glass, so I have tended to stick to the reds. Well, as my viewers know, we're moving <laughs> for a treat because we usually have a lot more than one glass after the show. Yeah. So, <laughs> She may or may not be going back to California at the end of the show. <laughs> and Sandy, what about you? I, I love good wine. Red, white, Merlot. I love them all. So good as long wine, as it's good, good wine. It, yeah. that's fine. You, I love them. I blood love is trying blood. new wines. Blood is blood. We like our wine. I we love like good, it good wine. So. so now in appreciation for you guys coming from California, I have a really highly rated Chardonnay. It's the 2012 Matchbook. It's a 96-pointer at the California State Fair. Nice. Um, this is really blows people's socks off if they're a Chardonnay fan. I'm not a huge Chardonnay fan, as my viewers know, but I've had good Chardonnays that I've actually liked. So this one is going to be very interesting. It's oak-aged, and uh, we will see what the ladies from California think of Dunnigan Hills Chard. And 2012 was a great year in the Dunnigan Hills. It was a perfect growing season for this particular vintage. And that's probably why it was a 96-point winner at the California State Fair. It's buttery. It is. Now, I've had these wines out, as you ladies know, when you came in. If they're not chilled, generally, I'm sure you would chill your whites or at least have a little chiller. But this still, even though it's, it's still it's chilled. It's slightly chilled. It's, it's nice. It's still good. It's, it's yeah, still it's perfect. It has its flavor profile, which I think is very interesting. And uh, you, if you see the legs on the glass... That's Seems like a lot of alcohol no, you, content in no, here. Yeah, no. You do legs with white. I always do legs with red and Merlots, but with white? Oh, absolutely, especially oh. a Chardonnay. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. A Chardonnay is going to give you a slow drip, too, especially if it's an overly buttery Chardonnay. Yeah. Okay. But this is not overly buttery because you don't see a lot of residue left on the glass when you do the little okay. swirl. But absolutely, you can do a, the wine swirl or the legs for a white wine because the stronger, the heavier the wine, like a really sweet wine, mm -hmm. it's... It's going to linger there in the glass. So they say this has pears, caramel, butterscotch, melon, um, especially in the aftertaste, the uh, melony aftertaste. I don't know if I agree with that yet. I don't I kind taste, of taste the butterscotch. See, I don't myself. taste the butterscotch. I do. I taste the melon. I just got the butterscotch with the last sip. See, there. Yeah, that's what I taste. But this is going to change because we're going to go back around. We're going to eat this or eat some food with this wine. And I think when you put a piece of cheese or one of the wasabi almonds in your mouth and then take a sip of the wine, all heck's going to break loose because <laughs> you know, it's, things okay. are going to taste completely different. It's going to be all crazy right. time on one guy and two California gals. It's going to be crazy time. So I have to admit, Bobby, I think this, this is a little heavy for me. It, it seems a little heavy, at least compared to that champagne that we tried first. Generally, I think, Sandy, a, a Chardonnay will be a little heavier, yeah. um, depending on you know, the type of Chardonnay it is. This particular one is okay with me. It's not overly buttery, but I'm only still going to give it, like, instead of all the way up, I'm still going to give it that halfway point. Mm -hmm. Not because it's bad, but because, like Linda said, it's a little heavier than I would like. It's, it's heavy in look to me only, not, mm -hmm. not in the taste, but just looking at it, it seems heavy. But I'll oh, give maybe it a thumbs up. Maybe you should close your eyes when you take your next sip. I'll give it a thumbs up. <laughs> We've never done a closed eye tasting before on the show. That might be something new. Okay, let me take off my glasses. So I know you guys are in town for my parents' 50th uh, wedding anniversary. We are. That, We're so excited. Yep, yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, me and my brother yes. are throwing a really big bash. And, 50 um, years. That's a that's big That's a long bash. time. We all strive for doing 50 years. Though I think if I did 50 years with Carrie, I think that would put me in my upper 90s. Yes. Well, you if can, I did 50, that would put me at least in my... 40s. That's exactly right. But you know, just, you know, longevity runs in the family. It does, so it's, it does. who knows what's going to happen. That's amazing. It's wonderful. 50 yes, years. It is. Is We're beautiful. so excited. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And mom and pops, are, we're going to show you a great time. However, it might not be a great time for some of our guests when they take their gift home. Our next wine is something that I spent a lot of time thinking about. As you know, you know, I have a lot of friends in the wine business, and I love French wine. Mm -hmm. So everybody that's coming to this party is going to be getting the next wine that we're tasting tonight. Oh, I know boy. I'm taking a big chance in this show, but the thing is only a few people that are actually going to be at the, the 50th anniversary party will know if it's bad or not. 
And then all the other guests, well, they're not going to find out until they get home. <laughs> this show's not going to be on for a while. Am I allowed so. to take this all home on the plane? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I actually, okay. Okay. Th thank you for reminding me. I actually have special carriers for you to oh, bring nice, your wine back home. Oh, nice, nice, so, awesome. So this is Les Du Rives Cobrias Blanc. Mm. And I know my French stinks, but uh, trust me, uh, if I said it pr correctly, it would be very romantic and you would probably get yeah. excited. Oh, so yes. romantic. As, as most people say when they say oh. in French, if they say it correctly, it's very love very the simple. label too. I, it's I a, actually am a label girl. I I kind of, I tend to. It's a beautiful I tend bottle. To buy labels. This is an eighty-seven pointer from Wine Spectator. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to get quite a lot of these from a very good friend of mine nice. in the business. Nice. And generally, for a French white of this caliber, um, it's it's unheard of um, at the price point that I got it. Nice. So. But this is a blend. It's a French blend. It's a white blend. So you're telling me I have to like it. No, you do not, Santa, because I told you. If you don't like it, <laughs> no one's going to know because they're not going to see the show okay. until long after the party. All right. Oh, okay. It looks very light. Very don't take light. a sip yet. Okay. So what we're going to have here, I'm not. there are three different varietals in this wine. There's a 60% Grenache, 20% Maraman, and a 20% Rousson. So this is a, bl a blend of very pronounced, very flavorful grapes. And this tends to have a nice fruit base, so I've been told. I can smell it. It smells delicious. If, and it's a French wine, so you're going to get a lot of minerals right off oh. the bat. You, right off the bat, you're going to get it. And this is considered a great summer sipper. So properly chilled, this is supposed to be great on the porch, on your deck, patio. Can you take Let's a sip? Let's see. Mm. Oh, I, I like this. That's very interesting. It's got a good herbaceous mineral characteristic. Mm. Mm -hmm. Fruity. It's, it's definitely lighter than the Chardonnay. Mm. I like this a lot, a lot better than the Chardonnay. <laughs> well, you, what you're going to notice... This is a whole different flavor yes, from the Chardonnay. Yes, it is. I Completely. can taste is everything. This, this is not a Chardonnay. What this is not a Chardonnay. No. This is a three white wine blend. Oh, yeah. It's completely different than that. And, it's, it's, and what did you say it had in it? For the varietals? Yes. Yes, it's 60% Grenache. And Grenache itself, you can buy a Grenache itself as a red wine. Mm -hmm. So this is 60% Grenache, and it's 20% Marisol, and 20% Rousseau. So. And the flavors I'm tasting are? A combination of all three of those grapes. Now, the reason it's not red, because Grenache can be red. Oh, okay. Is because they take the skins out earlier. That's what makes a white wine a white. Mm. Okay. They don't leave the, the skins in the fermenting process as long. The longer the skins stay in the fermenting process, the darker the color of the wine goes. So you could have a 100% Grenache wine. I can't believe I didn't know that. Yeah, I've been in so many vineyards, and I, 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 did not, I did not know that. It's the same with a Pinot Noir. Uh, they I actually love have, Pinot Noir. They have Pinot Noir bubbles, Pinot Noir champagnes. Um, you, just, you don't keep the skins in the fermentation as long. As soon as you take those skins out, you have a, mineral, uh, a minimum characteristic of the flavor of the Pinot Noir grape. The longer you leave the skins in, the more flavor you get from the Pinot Noir grape, the darker the wine. Wow, so, I did not know well, that. Well, Bobby, I, I'll be very happy to take a bottle of this back home to California. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, I'm very excited about Saturday. Yes, very good. <laughs> I, I, that's a thumbs up for me. Well, I, I have to confess now, because once again, nobody's going to see this who's probably going to be at the party. <laughs> Hey, Sandy, I actually, in reserve, have a special bottle of Chardonnay that only you are getting at the, oh, at the, at the party. Because I was worried that nice. you might not like this because I thought you were 100% Chardonnay gal. And, uh, really, so, Sandra? No, I do that, like it very I, much. Well, it's I too late because you're... I still want the other one. I'm just yeah, well, yeah, yes, okay. I'm not right. going to... But uh, I was very surprised that I like this one off the bat because it's uh, for a French white, these three blends I've never had before in this combination. It seems like a good summer out on the patio drinking a white wine. It's it's like a almost like a dessert wine I to like me. That. Now Bobby, let me ask I, you, you. Yes. You so this show that you're doing right now in progress, you you actually test these wines beforehand and yes. I would or say no? only about twenty to thirty percent of the wines we usually drink on the show and going on four years now, whatever it's gotta be. We started in two thousand eleven. And we've probably done 125, 130 bottles of wine tasting on the show. Wow. 25% to 30%, we go in, actually, 40%, we go in blind. We've never tasted before. Nice. Because that's what I makes love the show that fun. About this show. Yeah, that's yes. what makes it a I lot of fun. I love that about this show, yes. But this tastes like a dessert wine to me. It's funny you should say that. A little um, bit. Yeah. A little bit. I, I like it, but it's, it's more like a dessert wine just to drink with you know, cheese and crackers and stuff. Yeah, you definitely do with with cheese and crackers. Uh, that was one of the reviews when I looked it up, saying it's sort of a dessert wine. 
The alcohol content in all three of these is only about 12%, so it's actually less than red wine. Okay. So I don't think it's heavy enough to be a dessert wine. Um, I get a little taste of lemon and the aftertaste yes, for this one. Yes, definitely. Um, but once again, everybody has a different palate. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm going to only keep it half point until I taste that because when I'm drinking a wine like that, especially in the summer, I'm going to be eating different types of food with it. So when I pair that with uh -huh. what we have coming up, I might change my mind. Uh -huh. So let's get right into some tasting some food. Let's go back to the All champagne. Right. Oh, I did the same thing. Cava. You can't call it a champagne. <laughs> Cava. <laughs> I do that all the time. So I think we're going to taste first with this is, let's go with the uh, wasabi almond. Does anybody, you guys have a problem with wasabi? I know. Is it really spicy? I'll uh, give it a shot. Yeah, if it's too spicy, then no. Uh, oh, my. Oh, they're yummy. Aren't those good? Wasabi almonds. Mm. Everybody mm. buy them. They're phenomenal. Mm. Wow. Zingy. Now, they are. Let's take a sip of the champagne, or kava. That doesn't work. Mm. That does not work. Well, it totally changed the taste of that, the wasabi. Well, actually, the, the kava now does not taste as good. It doesn't complement the it's wasabi. It's too strong for Definitely that. Definitely too strong. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is, as, you, as our, my viewers know, popcorn works very well with champagne and kava and sparkling. Really? It's usually a salty... The what about salt? chocolate? I chocolate like definitely. chocolate and yes. champagne. Yes, chocolate will work very well. We've done that on the show, chocolate and champagne. Yeah, I think Dark this chocolate. wasabi is so strong that um, it totally took the flavor away from the champagne. Absolutely, 100% agree with you. 100% yes. agree with you. Mm. So I will say no pairing to wasabi almonds with this particular kava. I will agree Not enjoyable that. at all. So now we're going to go with the Chardonnay with the pungent cheese. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the pungent cheese is, but I've had this cheese with Chardonnay before, and I think it works deliciously. Oh, I love cheese and Chardonnay. It's such a nice combo, especially in the summer. Just it's this pungent. cheese here. <laughs> yeah, very good. Ooh, that's pretty pungent. It's a good pungent cheese. Oh, beautiful. Which, again, why I like doing this show. I love pairing white wines. Red wines, of course, too, but white wines, especially with nice, strong cheese. Oh, that's really That works nice. perfectly. Mm. I'm sorry, what are we? Uh, we're drinking the Matchbox? The Matchbox Chardonnay. Oh, yeah, this tastes much better with that Isn't cheese. Isn't that nice? <laughs> that's so, you know, very nice. Much better, yeah. Very nice. You're having Love a, this now with that cheese. You're having one of those ho, ho, ho parties. Yes, I am. Mm. And uh, you want to have some really good, fancy cheeses, not your typical, you know, store brand. Very nice. Cheeses. You want a nice, pungent cheese. You want to pair it with a Chardonnay. This Matchbox works phenomenal with this particular cheese. Mm hmm are you going to tell us what cheese that is? No. Funny you should ask, Linda. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. What cheese is that, Bobby? <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's really pungent. It's pungent. Really it nice. is a pungent what cheese. What cheese is that? I had a couple of cheeses chopped up in my refrigerator, and I put them in individual bags, and I grabbed one bag, so I didn't think I'd be able to get to all three cheeses tonight. Did not label the bag. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, it's so this you don't know what cheese. I know this isn't the Chardonnay, but whatever it is, this particular cheese goes very well with the Matchbook Chardonnay. And I want to point out, I think I told you the first bottle was the uh, about $12 to $14 for Kava. The Matchbook could be $15 to $18, depending on what That's you That's a good it. price. Mm -hmm. Good price for a high-quality, yes. highly-rated Chardonnay. Yes. And it works great with this cheese. And this actually would work great with any white cheese, to be honest with you. Yeah, white, white wine and cheese. I actually like just, it a lot. Chardonnay like cheese is yummy. I like it a lot better with the pungent cheese. So now in the uh, flavor of our one of our favorite movies here, uh, Bottle Shock. Great movie. We're going to take... You know, you guys, I love my French wine. So we're going to pair probably another piece of the cheese or a cracker with this Les Du Rives Cordoval. I'll try another piece of cheese with this. I think that's probably the better way to go. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. I want to hear what you have to say, Sandy, about that. See, I see this. That's a nice combo, and I could just see sitting out in the summertime on the patio with this and your cheeses and your your appetizers, and this is very nice. But it's like a dessert wine to me. I think this cheese completely smoothed out this particular white and didn't make it quite as sweet as it was the first time I had it. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely... It, I'm it, in agreement with that. It light, lightened this wine, in my opinion. 
it, I could see this better with chocolate. Yeah, I probably should have brought some chocolate. Dark oh. chocolate. I could see this better with a dark chocolate. I'm a total chocolate. Alcoholic. What's interesting though is I do a lot of fruit with wine. Also, do you grapes? Do you yeah, fruit? Uh, yeah. I mean, like I, actually, I've never fruit. done grapes with actual wine. No, That's no, kind no. Of <laughs> that was not right. I've done that either. You're absolutely right. Okay, that was a slip. That was a California uh, slip. Yeah, yeah. I but know. I strawberries. No, strawberries. cheese and wine, chocolate with wine. Peaches. I even had peaches with. Uh, well, you're a cab gal. I am, but I have done a lot of weddings. <laughs> In my day and um, you know a lot of fruit and white wines well I want to say again about the French you know it, it has very good herbaceous and mineral characteristics but when I first drank that without eating anything mm -hmm. I'm not gonna 100% agree with you Sandy that it was a dessert wine but yeah, it was a little sweet it. yeah I see it as too sweet for me to drink casually dessert wine it's too sweet for me however once you paired it with that cheese completely smoothed it out in my, yeah. in my opinion it out. In my opinion it did smooth it out definitely and uh, the reason that one of the reasons I wanted to get a white wine for the big anniversary bash, which everybody's going to be having a good time, is because I thought, you know, it's still going to be the summer. It's still a lot of people, like you guys going back to California, I think white's still probably a better wine to, Definitely. Yes. Yeah, to keep in the refrigerator or just keep in your cellar you know, at a constant temperature. White's a little tougher to store. You don't want to get it too warm. Mm -hmm. But because this is so highly rated, you can be able to store this for a few more years without it, uh, any damage. So generally, you don't store white wine for a long time. Generally, you drink it relatively quickly. Um, but this particular one, it would be no problem sitting if you wanted to store it for a couple of years downstairs. And uh, Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so we, you don't have to um, keep white wine refrigerated until you're ready? Um, you do not have to keep it refrigerated. I keep my wine uh, in a wine cellar where the temperature generally stays to be yeah, constant. I have it at temperature. Yeah. Constant temperature. Okay. It's usually between 50s yes. and the high 50s. As long and as then you when keep... you're ready to drink it, you chill it? Yes. And... Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yep. Even my reds, I like, not cold, but I like it slightly chilled on yeah. my reds. It's a, actually, Sandy makes a very good point. Um, there's no problem with having a, a red wine at a little bit of Sli a I don't like it chill. really warm. I like it slightly chilled. Just it's a so little bit. It's so bad for me. <laughs> Gotta have my calves and my merlots at room temperature. Oh, well, otherwise absolutely. they do not taste good well to me. All right, we should go back to our taste. But interesting to that. So yes. we're gonna go back with the bubbles again. All right. And we know it didn't go well with the wasabi. That was bad. No to wasabi. So let's try either a cracker or a piece of cheese. I think I'm gonna go with since I didn't try the cheese with the champagne, the cava, I'm gonna go with the cheese again. Okay, I'll Go for that. That worked a little better. That works a little. I really better. like the champagne. I'm I'm quite impressed. Yep, see, cava. I'm cava. Very, oh, cava. I'm very impressed with it. I mean, I like this oh, soft yeah, bubbles. Oh yeah, very good. Mm. I really like it. I mean, I love champagne, but I like really good champagne. And for this price point, this is a soft. It's not a heavy carbon. It's it's very nice. And you will find that uh, generally with most cavas, that's relatively the price point. It can very go nice. as high as the 20s. Very nice. But it's a, it's, it's a very accessible price point to get into the sparkling, the bubbles. Um, and to me, it's always a great, you will never go wrong with a Spanish wine in general. I've never really actually tasted anything on this show that was from Spain that I didn't like. Mm. Whether it was from Argentina, no, from Chile. No, I love Spanish wines. Always spot on. And uh, as, as you guys know, I've done a few shows with Fad Food on the show. Um, the show I think that's coming up in September is the Lobster Show, where I have my friend. Oh, can yep. we come We're back? back. <laughs> yeah. You can missed we that come? one. We're coming oh, we back. It. So we the, the Lobster Show, my friend Sally Lerman just wrote a book called The Best uh, Lobster Rolls in New England. Oh. She traveled all over New England, had every lobster roll that she could get her hands on. And wow. uh, she wrote a great book on where some of the best places are. And we paired those lobster rolls with Sauvignon Blanc. And i got to be honest with you. You can probably pair those lobster rolls with three of these wines here tonight, I think. Really? Yeah. really? I think it would be nice with this wine. Seafood actually would probably go very good with the uh, Les Du. Yes. Uh, is your French better than mine? I'm probably not pronouncing that right. No. Les Du Rives. No, Rives. it's not. I'm not even going to try. Les yeah. Do. Yes. Rives. Jean-Luc Picard would not be Les happy Do. with that right now. It's this, all I know um, is that's Louis Vuitton. Do. That's it. <laughs> Les Do Rives. Uh, Sandy, I think that's the line of the evening. All I know is I don't know. That's yes. fine word. I mean. All right. So we agree that the cheese worked with the bubbles. Absolutely. Very nice. Yes. Yes. Okay. This cheese is wonderful. 
I know you. It's that's your last piece. I know. It's know very. It. I love it. The name With the wines it. and the champagne, it's just such a great pairing. Yes. All right. So now we're back to the Chardonnay. Oh, we'll do the Chardonnay this really is the quick. One I don't like that. Seems kind of heavy to me, but and we'll do a cracker with this. Do a cracker with this. See how it does with food. Cracker. Really quick. That's warmed up a little bit. The cracker sort of tastes pretty good with the, with the Chardonnay. It's it's not bad. I like no, I like it. This one, I, I'm not. It's too much of a dessert wine for me. I like it for a dessert wine, but I love the Chardonnay and I love the Champagne. See, that's why, Sandy, I got you a Chardonnay as your <laughs> wine favorite because I knew that that one might be a problem because you're pretty, pretty particular. Yeah, so, um, I'm sure my face kind of told it all on camera. I, I'm just not fond of that wine, sorry. Which one? It, this, this is what we just tried So let me like the Chardonnay. With any food pairing. Sandy wasn't crazy about the Corbières, the French. But, I love but the we all like agreed the on the Cava. I love oh, it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That was very nice, yes. And that's very the nice. Casa Del Mar Blanc de Blanc. Uh, please uh, look for that. Uh, people in my audience uh, always frequent uh, Wise Old Dog Wine Shop here in West Hartford. He carries some phenomenal stuff. And uh, in our remaining few minutes, I want to thank both Linda and Sandy for coming down, being in Connecticut thank again. Thank you so what much for inviting us. And uh, it's so always much. a pleasure to have people who actually watch the show and, of course, being relatives to come down and be on the show and, uh, you know, drink. And, of course, we'll be doing that Very nice. a lot. Thank you so much. And I'm cheers sorry. to a great show. I Bobby. appreciate that. Thank you very much. And wait, um, you wait know, a minute. You can't cheer to empty oh, glass. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's just just wrong. Bad karma. The that is bad karma. Just be oh, okay, he still has some. I, well, you know, he's a host, right? And it looks like we're going to have great weather on Saturday. So perfect we'll weather. Oh yeah. And awesome. here's cheers to your mom and dad. Yeah, oh, cheers to my mother and father. Very exciting. Bob Beautiful. and Pam. Bob and Pam Prestash. Great fifty Wonderful years. Wonderful people. Uh, you know, you sort of something that we all look forward, look up to, because uh, fifty years is a long time. Yes, so, it uh, is. I want to thank uh, Sandy and Linda for being on the show. Thank you thank so you. much. I want to Fun. thank you too, Huntley, for always doing a great job behind the cameras and uh, our crew that does the camera work behind the camera. I want to thank everybody for watching the show. And, you know, we're coming up to uh, 2015. We're going to be four, going on almost four and a half years now. Wow. A long time. And we're going to continue tasting wine, and uh, Jim will be on the next show. And uh, thank you all for joining us. And until next time, keep Bobby P. and everybody Cheers. in your wine cellar. Cheers. Cheers. Hey!